This is the most famous negative political ad in American history. Which none too subtly suggested that Republican presidential candidate Barry Goldwater would start a nuclear war if he won the 1964 election. We must either love each other or we must die. It helped Lyndon Johnson win in a landslide. The stakes are too high for you to stay home. Is this a prime minister? And this is the most famous negative ad in Canadian history, in which the Conservatives tried to exploit Jean Chrétien's facial paralysis and odd expressions. I personally would be very embarrassed if he were to become the prime minister of Canada. Think twice. This was Jean Chrétien's response to the attack ad. They tried to make fun of the way I look. God gave me a physical defect. And I've accepted that since I'm a kid. In that 1993 election, Stephen Harper was a young candidate for the Reform Party. I mean, I was practically crying. And I was his opponent in an election camp. I was practically crying as I saw him reply to that ad. Uh, well, it was a very, very shrewd moment. And probably, if there was any doubt at that point, it certainly made him the Prime Minister. That ad was pulled off the air, and Stephen Harper was determined not to make the same mistake with negative ads in his campaigns, according to his longtime communications advisor, Dimitri Soudis. You can look at political ads that the Conservative Party of Canada has run uh, in the last seven years, ads that they put on television. None have backfired in, in terms of becoming something that they had to pull off the air. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that you know, the Prime Minister in this case probably learned that lesson from, from watching this ad. Part of what you're trying to do in a negative ad is two things. You're trying to create an emotion. Uh, ads are, are an emotional form of messaging. And the second thing you're trying to do is define your opponent. Uh, and, and defining who you are and defining who your opponent is is, is absolutely crucial part of political communication. That's what, that's, what, that's what the game is. What kind of leader is Stefan Dion? The conservative negative ads in the last two elections seemed devastatingly effective, knocking down first Stéphane Zion, Do you think it's easy to make priorities? And then Michael Ignatieff. He's not in it for you or for Canada. He's just in it for himself. It's the only reason he's back. Michael Ignatieff, just visiting. You know, it, it's ironic, right, that he's now left and he's back in Harvard. So. History has almost demonstrated that these ads were beyond truthful. They, they predicted the future. I mean, the key thing in a negative ad is you've got to have an element which, that has resonance. You've got to say, does this have a whole lot of resonance? That people are already thinking in yeah, some way. Absolutely. You, you don't make it up. <laughs> you, 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 create, you, you are responding to what is already a pre-existing impression that you think people have. And then you try and turn that into a strong emotional negative. Justin Trudeau. He was born with a famous name. The first anti-Justin Trudeau ad before this election was almost cartoonish. Justin Trudeau. He's in way over his head. You know, a lot of people apparently watched this ad in focus groups and whatnot and, and said, hey, this is just clearly unfair. You know, the circus music and everything, it, it's over the top and it would just make me feel more like voting for him than, than less. I would argue that it isn't necessarily an effective ad. Um, and the way that you can see that is look at polling trends as a party runs ads right at the beginning of the ad cycle where the numbers are at and then at the end of the ad cycle if those numbers have moved and in this case numbers hadn't moved. Let's talk about Justin. Let's start with the experience section. For a while the second anti-Justin Trudeau ad cycle was much more effective because it drove his popularity rating steadily downwards over the summer months it ran. He's just not ready. I'll tell you what I'm not ready for. I'm not ready to stand by as our economy slides into recession. Finally, the Liberals directly answered with ads of their own, and the hemorrhaging stopped. The emotional resonance is not something that's static in time. Things can change. Uh, people's impression of people can change. I've always felt that people had a fundamentally positive view about Mr. Trudeau. Uh, they like him, and I think the likability is not something that anybody should un underestimate to create sympathy for somebody to say, I really like this guy, I don't like the way you're, you're attacking him. Uh, and that can, that can have a positive, a positive effect. 
Some of the conservatives' nastiest attacks are in leaflets like this one, pledging to fight jihadi terrorists at home and abroad, suggesting ISIS is the problem abroad, while Mulcair and Trudeau are the problem at home. So this is consistent with the Conservative Party of Canada narrative in this election campaign. You consider it totally fairball? Absolutely, and I, I think that all parties um, are, are putting out such leaflets contrasting um, the other party's positions. I think it appeals to a base. I think there are people who say, yeah, more red meat, you know, throw me another piece. But I think for a lot of people, they just say, uh, this is, this is uh, the way it's placed, the way it's positioned. Um, it's, it's over the top because it implies that uh, Mr. Mulcair and Mr. Trudeau um, are somehow accomplices in this. In this uh, or in favor of ISIS. Or in favor of ISIS, which I just mean, the whole thing is it's just preposterous. Puis même si on n'est pas d'accord avec le port du niqab pour voter ou se faire assermenter. What about those anti niqab ads being run in Quebec by the Bloc Québécois and the Conservative Party? Ils veulent des nouveaux citoyens qui prêtent serment à visage découvert. You would certainly hear from Muslims now that they feel that the Bloc Québécois and the Conservative Party is playing an anti-Muslim card here. I, 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 would, I would say I hope not. You don't see this playing to a kind of anti-Muslim hysteria? I, I, I would... I guess I will refrain from commenting. Um, the anti-Muslim wave in Quebec has led to NDP and Liberal campaign posters being defaced with niqabs and to Muslim women being yelled at or even attacked in the streets. Negative ads often play a key role in the home stretch of a campaign, and there is evidence that the Conservatives see this now as a two-way race. I guess most people are expecting that the Conservatives have a much bigger war chest and they would be bombarding Justin Trudeau with negative ads in the last week. Uh, they do. Uh, I think that in terms of uh, the amount of money to spend, I think it's a $50 million cap for this election campaign, given the fact that it's been almost 80 days. Uh, I, I think it's very safe to say that the Conservatives probably have the most money than anybody else. And I assume that in the last week they'll be spending a lot of money on um, advertising. I always used to say, when we are tired of saying it, that's only when it starts settling in. <laughs> The last couple of elections, certainly the last election in Canada, people didn't make up their mind until the last two or three days. So I can fetch you that the parties are all looking at that evidence and saying, we better be ready to meet the arguments that we're going to face on the last day. Studies have shown that many undecided or swing voters claim that advertising is their major source of information in an election. And so the predicted avalanche of last week ads could still have a big effect on the outcome, whatever the polls say today. Terence McKenna, CBC News, Toronto.